We've been looking this month at giving. How giving is a beautiful reflection of God's heart. That the very nature of God is to give, to bless. And when we give, we reflect his heart. Giving is also a, a glorious declaration of God's ownership of all things. That the earth is the Lord's and, and all that is in it. We and everything that we have ultimately belongs to God. And so when we give, we release it back to God. And it's just saying, God, all of this belongs to you anyway. And giving is a profound commitment to put God first. In, in our world today and in our culture especially, money is God. Money controls things. But as believers, we are countercultural. We go against the grain. We say, no, we are going to put God first in our lives. And giving is a powerful statement of trust. As we you know, did with the kids here, it's just like, boy, so much money has got to go to this and so much money has to go to that. And then it's like, there isn't anything left to give to God. But when God says, give to me first, we're trusting him to provide. And whether that's less expenses in some area, whether it's a, a, a blessing in another area, he can do it in, in amazing ways. But we're saying, God, we trust you to provide for our daily needs when we give. And giving is a strong affirmation of God's kingdom. We're going to look at that next week. And how God's kingdom is really the ultimate reality. You know, what we live in and what we see and do now is temporary, is passing. But God's kingdom is eternal. And so investing in the kingdom of what is going to last forever is where the ultimate investment is. And we say, yes, God, we believe in you. We believe in your kingdom. We believe in eternal purposes. And that's where we're going to put our money. That's where we're going to put our time. That's where we're going to put our effort. We are learning to give. So this morning we're going to look at a, a very uh, classic passage on giving, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 15. The passage starts out with a little proverb. It says, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. And it comes out of an agricultural community that if you want an abundant harvest, then you've got to sow a lot of seeds. If you do just a few seeds, your harvest will not be large. And it's that sense of what you put into something is also what you get back. If you're generous in your giving, generosity will return to you. If you're stingy in your giving, not much will return back to you. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give. Not reluctantly, not under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things and at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor and their righteousness endures forever. Now, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed, will end in will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service which, because of this service which you have, uh, have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. 
Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. And when we look at giving, Paul is writing in this passage, and he's saying, I I want you to give expectantly. You know, if if you sow just a little bit, you're going to only expect a small harvest. If you sow a lot, you should expect a large harvest. And so in your giving, I want you to give with great expectations on what God will do through your generosity. I also want you to give freely, not forcing you, not demanding it, not, you know, God is not, you know, this, this taskmaster in heaven that just, you know, says, you've got to do this. It's to meant to be an expression of love. It's meant to come out of this, this heart that loves the Lord and, and recognizes all of his great gifts for us. The gift of eternal life, the gift of forgiveness, the, the gift of peace with God, and, and that we have this peace and an assurance of our uh, uh, salvation and that we belong to God's family, that our eternity is secure in him. And God says, I have been free in my giving to you. I want you to freely Give to me. It's this relationship, this reciprocal relationship of love. To give freely and then with that, cheerfully. Cheerfully. Not grudging. Oh, well, if I have to, if you make me or, or anything like that. But with this delight, with this joy, with a sense of, of cheerfulness. And I am glad I can share in this ministry. I'm glad I can participate. It gives me joy to be able to do this and then to do it abundantly. Abundantly. That's something for, for, that's hard for a Dutch guy to do, okay? Because you're always kind of counting that out and saying, well, I figure this and figure that and so forth. But, but God is just saying, trust me, give abundantly, give generously, and watch how I respond in kind to you. To give abundantly, but then to give purposefully. When Paul was speaking to the church in Corinth, he was asking for gifts for the people back in Jerusalem. Because back in Jerusalem, they were undergoing a severe famine. They were in rough times. And Paul was saying to the church here in Corinth, you know what, you you Gentile Christians over here, you may not feel a lot of connection to those Hebrew Christians back in Jerusalem, but you are brothers and sisters. You belong to each other. And now, because you have resources and they don't, with your abundant and generous gifts, you can touch their lives and they will praise and bless God and be further drawn closer to you. When we give, we give with a purpose. We want to know that those resources are are, are making a difference, are helping out, are achieving God's eternal purposes. To give purposefully and then to give thankfully. Thankfully. To recognize that every gift given comes from God and every gift that we give back to him is just an expression of gratitude because all we have and who we are, every skill and ability and and resource all comes from God and it's just a way of saying, thank you God from whom all blessings flow. Heiko Oberman was on a uh, a tour one time to uh, China and uh, it's with a number of people from his church and so forth. And they were, you know, going around, seeing the different sites. But they had a, a free day on one of the Sundays. And one of the ladies in the uh, tour group said, you know, I, I was born in China and I emigrated to the United States. And so she had made arrangements to go back to her uh, home village, her, her hometown there, and, and visit the church where she grew up. It was just a very simple poor country church. Uh, the people didn't have a lot of resources, but, you know, she gathered there with them, and uh, they, they just, such a, a warm welcome, and, you know, some of the people recognized her as this, like, oh, you know, you were from our church. Share with us. Tell us about your church back home. Well, the lady was a little embarrassed because she went to this huge, you know, church in Los Angeles, and they're just undergoing this, you know, massive building campaign, and 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 you know, putting up a large sanctuary. But but with humility and 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 graciousness, she 
she you know, expressed how the church was doing wonderful ministry and people were coming to faith in Jesus Christ, so much so that they decided to, to build a larger building to, to help them do that. And she did it you know, very, very modestly. Well, the people in that congregation were all excited. Our sister is involved in a church in the United States, there, and, and many are coming to the Lord. We need to take an offering for her and for her church. And so they took an offering, and $140 was collected by that congregation to send with that dear sister to help the church back in America carry out their mission. They had no clue that that building was costing like $10 million and that their $140 was just, just a drop in the bucket from a financial standpoint. But in God's eyes, was it just a drop in the bucket? That gift was so precious. That gift encouraged so many more back in the United States to also give with generosity that that money that was raised quickly and that building was completed, and everybody, it wasn't no longer just this, you know, building that we enjoy here for ourselves. No, they knew that Christians in China were praying for them, that they would continue to do the work of the Lord in reaching people for Jesus Christ. Giving. Giving is such a beautiful thing that reflects the heart of God, but we want to concentrate this morning now just on some real basic nuts and bolts. For some of you, you've grown up perhaps in a, in a Christian family, you've been raised in a church, and, and giving is already a part of what you do. God bless you for that. For some of you, maybe you came to Christ later in life, maybe your home environment was not a generous home environment. I don't know all your stories, but I do know that some understand the grace of giving, and for some others, maybe this is all new. And so we want to ask this morning, how do I get started? Where do I begin? I want to honor God. I want to bless Him. I want to give. But right now, I just look at my situation, and I don't know where to get started. How to even to begin this discipline, this grace of giving? I want you to start in prayer. When the heart is in the right place, God can do tremendous things on the inside. And so ask, God, help me, show me, make it possible for me because I want to give to you. I want to serve the church in this way, but I'm going to need help. And then recognize that, that giving is more than, than dollars and cents. Giving can involve time. Giving can involve your talents and your abilities. And then also the treasure, the, the dollars and the cents that you have. And so giving is broader. But we're going to focus in on the financial aspect of it today. I want to bring up a term called tithing. Tithing is a, a term from the Old Testament and it comes out of a, a, an agricultural society that when your harvest comes in, God says, take the tithe, take a tenth of the first fruits, the first portion of the harvest, and bring that to me. Now, bringing it to God meant bringing it to the temple or to bring it to uh, one of these cities of worship. And uh, when, when God dispensed the, the, the promised land to the different tribes of Israel, one of the tribes, the Levites, he didn't give any land to them. But the Levites weren't going like, hey, what's going on here? You kind of gypped us. You didn't give us any land. God said, Levites, I want you guys to focus on direct ministry for me. So I want you to be the ones to serve at the tabernacle or the temple or to help people, you know, work through their religious things and help them with their sacrifices. Your full-time job gets to be serving me and then the support that the other people bring in, those are the resources you use to live on. And so the tithe was there to help support the Levites in their ministry and the care for God's temple. And and so that's where tithing comes from. Tithing is 10%. And so whether you get 
paid weekly or paid every other week or monthly or maybe you're self-employed and your income kind of just goes up and down. But the simple principle is is that it's 10% of your total income. And so if we just want to keep things simple here this morning, let's say you make $500 a week. 10% is $50. So if that's a regular thing, you know, you make $500 a week, then if you would do a tithe, it would be giving $50. If it's um, $750 a week, it would be $75. If it was $1,000 a week, it would be $100. And you do the math for your situation, whatever that may be. A 10% is is that you kind of whack off that last digit. See how $1,000, you whack off the last zero, it becomes 100. And that's just kind of keeping it simple, but the basic principle of tithing. That's the amount. Now, sometimes you need to set a goal. Because some of you may be thinking this morning, I can't afford that. I I can't do 10% of my income right now because you haven't worked up to that. You haven't really, you know, structured your life and your spending and your saving and your earning around that. And so it is a learning process. But set a goal. In prayer, ask God to guide you and say, okay, maybe I'm not going to start out, you know, I can't start out with 10%, but as I rework my financial situation, I'm, I'm going to start out with 1% or 2 and, and then I'm going to try to increase, and maybe in a, a year from now, I might be up to 5 or 6%. Two years from now, I might be at a full 10%. You know, you don't even have to stop there because it's not like God is saying, well, you know, 10%, you know, it's all cut and dried legally, you know, this is what you have to do. Remember, God loves a cheerful giver, a generous giver. And so for some of you, you're, you're looking at your situation and saying, you know what? I don't need 90% of my wealth to live on. I want to be able to give more. But the tithe is the biblical standard, a biblical goal to reach towards, and then from there, let God guide you even beyond setting. You see, we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. And as we learn this discipline of giving, we find that our hearts become more joyful more generous. We're more appreciative of the little things that we do have in life, and it's not always about, I want more, 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 and the latest and greatest, and and this whole, you know, uh, time of year in which it's all about buying, buying, buying. What about giving, giving? That is the true spirit of Christmas. That is the true spirit of Thanksgiving. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. We make a life by what we give. And now I want to share with you the biblical principle of giving first to your church. It's not spelled out that specifically in the Bible. But here's the principle. Tithing comes from that Old Testament practice of how the uh, 11 tribes gave to the Lord to support the Levites who served the Lord directly. So that tithe went for that local ministry where the Levites were serving in your area. Your church is your spiritual family. And so recognizing that you've got needs within your own particular family, yes, and those need to be cared for, But God says, I also want you to give to me and give that through your local spiritual family. This is the group that you belong to. It's not excluding other uh, uh, wonderful ministries and and things that are out there, but it's just saying this is kind of a first step. This is the place where you begin. And then as I bless, you can look for other opportunities. But here's your spiritual family. These are the people who care for you who watch over you, who help you grow spiritually. They're the ones who are entrusted to to seeing you develop uh, spiritually. And and if no one supports your local church, if, if you don't, then how will it gain support? 
in your church. They provide ways for you to serve. And they also serve you. And so your local church, when everybody recognizes that this is where I need to give, my time, my talent, my treasure, can you imagine the impact if everybody in the local congregation was fully engaged in that? That everybody said, I'm giving my 10%. I'm giving up my, my time, my talents, and so forth to serve in my local church community. The kind of impact that would just radiate out from every local church throughout the world. You wouldn't need government social services. You wouldn't need all, you know, all these other things that are there that have grown up because the church has not fully done its job. But when Christians give give to the Lord and give to their local church and volunteer and serve in ways and saying, yes, count me in. The impact is amazing. And how God will bless and work through congregations who are faithful in this ministry of giving. Well, how's the money used? Sometimes we're just like, you know, I give and I put it in the offering plate and the deacons kind of take it away and then and then what happens to it? Well, in another week, the annual budget is going to come out. And uh, tomorrow evening, we hope to finalize it uh, in council. I'm not going to walk through tons of line items and, and, and uh, dollar amounts and so forth because I know, in, first, especially in a worship service, your eyes are just going to you know, glaze over and like, whatever. But I want to break it down simply. And again, recognize that, that these amounts that I'm going to be putting up there our projections at this time. Uh, in a week or so, we will have the, uh, the final budget uh, proposal. The first category I want to look at is just like facility. We've got utilities, maintenance, there's insurance, there's office expenses, there's paper, printing, equipment, postage, all that kind of stuff. I lump that into one category, and we have been blessed with wonderful facilities, but this building right here is over 50 years old. You know? It, it takes a little work. It takes a little bit of maintenance. And there are some projected capital expenditures like a boiler, you know, coming up. And so money is being set aside for these things. That's approximately $40,000 of our budget just is wrapped up in these kinds of things. The second deals with church staff, a pastor, a full-time pastor, uh, a worship leader, part-time, a, a youth leader, part-time, and custodians, and a secretary. Now, this makes up an even larger portion of the budget, $140,000 worth. But you're recognizing that you've brought somebody to work full-time to help organize work on things. Uh, I would say approximately half of my time revolves around what happens here on Sunday morning, preparing for it, studying it, uh, coordinating with people and, and, and so forth. That about half my time goes into what takes place here on Sunday mornings. Maybe another quarter of my time goes towards uh, meetings and, and working, organizing things, some leadership and, and uh, preparing for that kind of stuff. And then the rest of the time is, is spent you know, visiting people, uh, serving out in the community, uh, finding ways to, to, to connect with people and so forth. And so that's just a real simple breakdown. But I have the privilege of being able to work full time to see the ministries of Green Road Church take those steps forward. Now, I can't do it all on my own. I don't want to do it on my own. It's not biblical for me to. But being able to concentrate on that full time enables all of us to do our jobs better. That the teaching that you receive is hopefully, you know, biblically sound, is stimulating and motivates and encourages you in your spiritual growth. That what the teams plan and, and, and carry out, you're able to engage in and invest in. That when you're sick, there's someone who's there to come and visit you and, and funerals and weddings and so forth. That's the blessing of having a full-time pastor and then we're also blessed to be able to have someone to concentrate on worship uh, and, and in the area of youth to keep things clean and to keep things organized. The third category is then the ministries. And these are the, 
the, the budgets for the various teams, the caring team, the growing team, the praying team, the reaching team. Reaching involves uh, you know, coffee break and Bible school and cadets and gems and kingdom kids. It's our Kids Hope program. Uh, it it's embraces a large number of things. The ministry planning group, MPG, the council, and then our ministry shares. We are partners with um, other churches in this grouping called Classes Kalamazoo, but then also part of a larger denomination called the Christian Reformed Church, which has ministries worldwide. And so about $40,000 goes into all of that. So these are just quick, simple numbers, but kind of gives you a feel on how everything puts together, coming up with a total of about $220,000. And again, this is just estimates, not the exact thing. You'll receive that next week. But I hope that's helpful for you just to realize, wow, there's a lot that goes on here, but it does take some resources. It does take some, some you know, financial giving. And so when we look at all of this, it helps us learn to give. Now, back in the day, it was like we took the, you know, here's the budget, $220,000. We counted up all the professing members, did the math, and it's like, okay, each of you owe this amount. And on the one hand, you could say that's fair, right? Everybody pays the same. But it's really not the biblical approach. And you can well imagine that if you kind of did the math, and, you, and then some people are going like, oh, my goodness, I could never afford that. And other people are saying, cool, no problem. Got a lot extra I can do with. You see, because God has blessed us differently. And some people maybe have been given a higher amount of financial resources, and other people have been given different things in other areas. And it's not like one is better than the other, but what is so amazing and interesting, and I, I think it's just genius on God's part, we need each other. If everybody was blessed the same, we would all be the same, and we want to learn and grow and, and, and have this ability to share with each other. But God has blessed us differently so that we can share. And through the principle of tithing, we give and we give, and maybe we can go beyond that. And maybe in other times, it's hard for us to even reach up to that amount. But when we work at it together, we say we need every one of us. Because some are able to contribute maybe more in the area of finances. Some are able to contribute more in the area of, of time. Some are able to contribute and saying, you know what? I can do ministry with little kids. And others of us are saying, that's not for me. Some of us can be teachers, and some are saying, no way could I be a teacher, but I will help out and work on the facilities. God has made all of us different. But we need each other. And when we work together, beautiful things happen. When everyone prays fervently and serves wholeheartedly and gives generously God's kingdom grows incredibly let's watch him work here at Green Road Church Would you join me in prayer Lord we've been challenged again to see giving as more than just what we can afford or what's left over, but to see giving as a, an expression of love to you, recognizing all that you've given to us. And as we face um, ministry opportunities, Lord, we want to be ready, ready with time, talent, then also the treasure to meet those needs and to share your love and to encourage people in the faith and to walk alongside those who are struggling because your kingdom, Lord, is growing. We're so grateful for the generosity that has been on display here at Green Road Church. I see it all the time. 
we also know that we need to continue to grow in this grace. So help us, Lord, as we learn to give. In your name we pray. Amen. Carrie?